Before we begin construction of our stabilizer, it's a good idea to locate all of the major parts, take inventory, and be able to identify by part number to the plans. And there is the spar tilted down on the table with all of the ribs aiming up. Notice that the flanges are pointing outboard. Now our next step is to cut four L angles, approximately 75 millimeters in length. This is from our standard L stock, which comes in the four foot lengths, and we'll just cut these down to 75 millimeters. Here, all the holes have been drilled out, and you will notice from the color of the Clecos, which ones are going to be a five versus a four. By ensuring that the front is level with respect to the back spar, which is sitting on your workbench, you're ensuring that the stabilizer doesn't have any twist. In other words, that the, this end isn't up higher or vice versa than the other end, that the whole thing is flat from one end to the other. Now we're ready to install the gear gusset. That's, this is 6B8-1. Now, the location for this is gonna be right down in here. going to go up against the sidewall. The flange, the small flange, is going to be facing up and of course we have another flange up here. It is to fit inside of the top shelf. Now before we drill into the side channel we want to make very sure that that channel is 90 degrees to the face of the firewall. So I'm going to take a square and just make sure, there are two of these, one for the left and the right, they're interchangeable. We want the flange to be outboard and it simply slips over the shaft. Here's another view of it. But we'll drill these out to the full size after we reattach the Longeron underneath so that we can drill that all together at the same time and we'll prepare the upper hinge by locating two pilot holes about 10 millimeters back and don't make them too close to the edge and we can lay this in place and then adjust as necessary and remember the bend is to line up with the edge. One of the vertical L's that are just in front of the cable outlet opening need to be removed and trimmed. We're talking about right in here. We're gonna trim this flange off because the cable is gonna come by here and go out the opening and this flange is in the way. So we're gonna mark 50 millimeters up and remove just this flange on both sides. I drilled a hole to get a radius right at the corner and then trimmed it from both directions. That way, after the Clecos are in place, Notice how nicely the curved vertical L you previously created fits into the contour of the skin. Looking for the rivet line through the pre-drilled holes, we can go ahead and rivet this in place. I'm going to pass it through there. The bearing goes inside of the flange on the north side of the spar on the front side of the spar. And our goal is to raise this up or down to get the torque tube level. So simply place a level right behind the spar on top of the torque tube and raise this up or down 
as necessary. And here is the axle assembled. There we go. Now, first step is we should put the rubbers in there. Right? Once this is drilled with the six holes, we can then, of course, match that up with the fork and bolt it together nicely on both sides and then drill those six holes in tying these together further. You now have your fuselage on wheels. Now we have located all of our ribs and laid them out. Now it's important to identify each rib which has a number and whether it's for the left wing or the right wing. And here's an example of the channel has been trimmed. We then laid the wing down onto the table into its normal flying position. Our goal is to level the front spar and the rear spar so that you can get them as close as possible to the same. It doesn't have to be level, right? The front and rear spar just have to be the same. If you have a digital level, that's fine, but we want them both very parallel. We're going to take the nose skin and attach it first to the bottom of the wing, which is pointing up right now. Notice how the straps are aligned in the back. These blocks of wood, which were cut to simply fit into the spar, keep the straps from hurting the flange or the skin on the top and bottom. 